What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2021 Genesis G80. Huge thanks to Genesis for providing me here with the all new G80 to review for you guys today. So about the all new G80. So it's on a completely new platform now and uh, looks really, really good too. Completely changed as far as everything here on this new G80. And I love this new styling. It's very lean and athletic, but still super classy and expensive looking. And uh, I think it's one of the better looking vehicles in this segment. It certainly stands out compared with all the BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, you know, they're all kind of just very evolutionary with their styling changes and stuff. And they all look nice, but I think this really stands out from the crowd very well. I also love, you know, you have these quad LED headlamps up front, which are split into the two different lenses there that look really great. I like the bold grill there. I know some people aren't a huge fan of these enormous grills. I think the Genesis though, it's very appropriate for a grand luxury vehicle like this to have that, to have the prominent Genesis badge there on the front. I think it looks really, really good. Coming down to the sides, you have 19 inch wheels because this is a 2.5T advanced trim. If you were to go for the larger V6 engine version, then you would have 20 inch wheels here instead. But I think these 19s look very nice. You do get 18s as standard on the base G80, but I think they're a really attractive wheel design. And uh, another thing I really love are the fenders. And I love how you have a little bit of a chrome finish here, but you also have LED turn signals there in that uh, fender. And it kind of nicely continues the line you get from the headlight that curve around instead of just having you know little turn signal lights in the mirrors or something like that to have this bold look here on the fender whenever you have that turn signal on will also help you to stand out from the crowd otherwise coming down to the sides it's all very attractive looking and uh, I just think it's kind of interesting though how especially as it tapers down towards the rear there it's a very fastback type shape you know it's not like the normal sedan shapes you get with all the competition but it's also not full-blown sport back like you get with the Audi and stuff like that so I think it's a a very unique look the way that they did the back end there um, you know it's not quite as flowing and not as uh, long in the back there as you get with some of the others but I think it still looks really good even though you do have a little bit of a shorter trunk lid what I really love about that trunk lid is that you have a little bit of a concave surface area there for that trunk lid and so it's very cool with the way it kind of sweeps in and kind of forms a little bit of a spoiler there in the back I also love those tail lamps which also reflect the same dual lens design you have here on the front and uh, I love that they're proudly spelling out the Genesis badge there on the back instead of just doing the flying emblem you get on the front you know they're very proud of the Genesis badge they're not trying to make it look like it's a Bentley or anything like that and I really like the way they have that on the back and uh, just some nice you know exhaust finishers there on the lower part of the rear bumper and overall I just really love the styling of the G80 I think they just knocked it out of the park I think it just looks good from every single angle all right so start up and go for a drive the Genesis G80 here has this new Genesis key which is really nice uh, it just has the uh, Genesis logo there on the front of it and on the back you just have these metal buttons here it feels really nice and I like how it's kind of tapered here towards the top and uh, just is a really high quality feeling key it's a little big but it's just you know at least it's nice and skinny it's not too thick just uh, nice and long but a very cool key I really like this key a lot but of course keyless access keyless entry and push button start so you just leave the key in your pocket hit the engine start button and it starts right up. If you're curious to hear about the interior in the all new G80 here, my wife and I actually just did a full in-depth interior review on this vehicle. So I will link that above. You can go watch that if you want to hear all our thoughts on this interior. But overall, I mean, it is stunning. Um, it is absolutely impressive. Blows your mind with just how nice it is in here. It really is insane. It's just, it really is impressive. So yeah, definitely go watch that video for all the thoughts on this interior, but I absolutely love it. All right, so setting off here in the 2021 Genesis G80. So the first thing you notice about the G80, um, I think the first thing that I notice is it's just everything is soft and comfortable. Everything is nicely weighted. Um, you know, steering is one of the first things that I really feel. It just feels really nice and natural but also just nice and light uh, with just a little bit of heft to it just everything feels very expensive in here with the way you drive it I also love the visibility here in the G80 I mean you have you know a good large windshield here a nice little uh, window at the a pillar nice thin a pillar as well so that's really great and view out of the back is also really good in typical sedan fashion so no complaints there other things you notice about the G80 here just cruising at low speeds on a park road here is that it's pretty smooth and refined I mean this suspension is set up to definitely be uh, very much on the luxurious side uh, it's not maybe gonna be as sporty as some of the others we'll test that a little bit more when we go out onto a back road but what you do notice is that it is so quiet I mean listen to how quiet it is it is just like 
buttery smooth. And according to car and driver's testing, it's actually as quiet as a Bentley Flying Spur in here. So yes, it is definitely luxury car levels of quiet in here for sure. Also, while I'm coming to a stop here, brakes have a very progressive, natural, easy to modulate feel to them so that it's very easy to be smooth with your stops. Also, throttle responses also tuned to be very much on the smooth side. So it's not razor sharp by any means. It's not very sporty at all, honestly, but it's very smooth. And so it gives you predictable power and it's very gradual so that, you know, if you really want to accelerate, you have to be intentional about that, but it just gives you this very relaxed feel when you're driving the G80 that I really like. But yeah, and it just soaks up the bump so well. But here in the uh, two liter four cylinder turbo version of the G80, you don't get any kind of fancy adaptive suspension like you get in the V6 versions. The twin turbo V6 actually gets a uh, adaptive suspension suspension with road preview which uses cameras to kind of predict how the suspension should react to the bumps coming up and stuff. You don't get any of that advanced stuff here in the four cylinder turbo no matter how much you pay. Um, so that's a little bit of a bummer but it does say it does have a self leveling suspension so we'll test out how that handles on a back road. But first uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it up into the sport driving mode here and let's turn down onto this back road and see how it accelerates. And here we go. A little bit of a delay. Then it accelerates very nicely. So um, yeah, this engine, it's definitely hauling around more weight than it is in a lot of the other vehicles that I've tested it in. But it's very torquey and has a nice uh, burly sound to it as well. For a four cylinder turbo, it sounds really good, especially here in sport, but I think there might be some assistance from the speakers too. Because it has a little bit more of a harmonious sound than it does whenever you're out of sport mode. But anyway, um, yeah, it's a good amount of power. So it's a two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It has 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque. And according to Motor Trends testing, zero to 60 times are going to be about uh, 5.9 seconds here for the all wheel drive version of the four cylinder turbo. If you were to go to the rear wheel drive version, it's about 0.2 seconds faster. And then if you want to go for the uh, twin turbo V6 versions, those will be, you know, in the very low fives or maybe even into the fours if you're lucky but um honestly this four cylinder turbo is not really lacking for power i just it didn't snap my neck off the line or anything you know it's it's very delayed with its acceleration i wish it was a little bit more responsive but uh aside from that i mean it's a good healthy amount of power and again it's set up with more of a luxury car type vibe trying acceleration here with the uh manual shifting i got it in first gear here and here we go Okay, so it's a little bit delayed with those shifts, um, but you know, at least it's honest. The tack doesn't jump before it actually shifts, but it's uh, an eight-speed automatic transmission, the same Hyundai, Kia, Genesis eight-speed they use in a lot of the other stuff that they have, and it works well enough. I've tested it in the Stinger, and I've tested it in you know other Genesis models in the past, and it's totally fine. Downshifts are actually one of the high spots. They're fairly quick. But uh, yeah, it's not super sporty, but then again, this isn't you know a sporting model or anything, so I think it's okay. It doesn't have you know razor sharp uh, responses for all that kind of stuff. But you know, if you do want to you know use the paddle since they do provide them, just know that they work pretty well. Yeah, this thing is really strong. But anyway, we're coming up some corners here. Let's see how the G80 handles them. Okay, so interesting. Uh, in sport mode here, it really. The throttle response does get better at some higher speeds here, but anyway, it's handling itself pretty well for for what it is. This is interesting though. I'm so it feels like turn in is kind of slow. I wish that it was a little more eager to dive into corners, but then once you are in the corner, it really likes to rotate and it feels like it wants to kind of slide around on you. I mean, it's very secure. It's not going to slide, especially with the all-wheel drive system here, but it feels like if you provoked it, it would, you know, kind of, uh, you could allow it to slide around a little bit. You could kind of play around. It just feels a little playful, which I really like. Um, it also does impart confidence. It's just, again, everything is a little lazier than I would like it to be, but again, we are talking about a regular G80 here, not any kind of performance version or, you know, anything like that. I mean, this is set up for luxury first and foremost, and I can feel that in the way that it handles, uh, but it does feel pretty good. There is some roll and some lean. I think that, you know, definitely if you had the 3.5T version, 
that will probably stiffen up things a little bit better and be the sportier one but granted you know you're obviously going to go for that extra power if you're looking for the sportiest version anyway so that makes sense that that gets all the handling goodies as well um, but this version still handles itself pretty well so we're on these uh, Michelin Primacy all-season tires so nothing sporty uh, but they are staggered in their setup they're 245 in the front and 275 in the rear so uh, you know able to put down the power very well you know with this rear bias all-wheel drive system I'm guessing with a heavier engine of the V6 um, you might have some extra weight to deal with in those but they did actually drop weight a good bit though on these new G80s it's actually down about 200 pounds over the old G80 so they did a really good job with that so the curb weight on uh, this one here is going to be about uh, 4,230 pounds as it sits here with the four cylinder and the all-wheel drive so you know good amount of uh, weight still you know it's not going to be super light and I think some of the Germans do have a little bit less curb weight to deal with but overall you know it doesn't feel too heavy in corners for a luxury sedan like this Another acceleration. <laughs> yeah, it does a good job. For most people, you know, if you're just looking for a luxurious vehicle, it still has a decent amount of power. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be really let down by this unless you're looking for the absolute most power possible. But uh, this engine is more than adequate. Um, I will say, though, whenever you're not in sport mode, just kind of cruising around at lower speeds, it is a little bit noisier sometimes than I would like out of a luxury sedan like this. You know, usually it's a little more well insulated and the engine's a little more removed from the experience. In this, you kind of hear it a little bit more, which is okay in sport mode, but out of sport mode, I just sometimes I wish it was a little more refined feeling but you know I did uh, review the previous generation G80 Sport I hope they do an actual sport version for this generation as well like they did for the previous because I think you know with some suspension tweaks and better tires and stuff I think this could potentially you know be pretty dynamic but as it is right now I think that actually the previous generation G80 Sport was more eager to dive into corners felt a little more athletic I think they definitely tuned this again just be a a little bit softer I can feel that that extra plushness in er the way everything is tuned and set up that's not bad considering most people are buying this to be a luxury car not you know a sports car so I don't fault them one bit for going with that type of tuning but I just do hope that they do some type of sportier version down the line and I'd be very curious to you know try out the 3.5 T with that adaptive suspension and see you know how that uh, changes things but um, yeah it still does do a really good job. This all-wheel drive system does a great job putting the power down. Yeah, overall, I have no complaints with the way this drives for what it's going for. If you're looking for the sportiest thing in this segment, you're probably better off looking elsewhere, honestly, at least, you know, as far as this four-cylinder version goes. But um, anyone looking for a great luxury sedan, this is still going to have plenty good handling. And it still isn't bad. I am really splitting hairs. This still handles itself very, very well. And so I am not complaining one bit. It's just a little softer than I'm used to from some of the other stuff out there and you know like compared to stuff like the Genesis G70 or uh, you know the Kia Stinger GT you know this is definitely a lot less sharp than those are. Unfortunately I don't have much experience with the German competitors and their base four-cylinder versions. Um, the only stuff I've done is like the V8 versions of the BMW 5 series and also the uh, twin turbo V6 in the uh, Mercedes E43 AMG a few years back when they still made the E43 in the E-Class. Um, so that's really my experience and those are much sportier in their setups. So not really a fair comparison with this turbo four-cylinder version at all. Um, but, you know, I think that they all have their pros and cons, but I think the fact that you get, you know, so much more car for less money in this than you do with the German competitors is really still the defining thing about the Genesis brand. And popping it now into the comfort mode again, the uh, RPMs drop, it kind of chills out a little bit, and uh, it still is just such a nice cruiser. But thanks to Genesis, I'm going to have the G80 here for the next week here. So I'm going to drive around all over the place, and I'll come back and give you guys my final real-world fuel economy, as well as my thoughts on the pricing, its competition, and anything else that I noticed here during my week of driving. All right, so I've been driving the G80 here for a week now, and it's really been a nice thing to cruise around in. It, they just do such a good job of making the G80 a luxury car, first and foremost. And I'm kind of glad that they're unapologetic about that. They're not trying to make it, you know, half luxury, half sports sedan like many others do. You know, I don't think this is the sportiest of the bunch by a long shot as far as all the competitors go. But I think that it really does such a good job of being a luxury car, and I think that's okay. I'm viewing this as almost like a modern equivalent of what Lincoln should be making. It should be the same kind of thing that, you know, you see a full-size Buick or even Cadillac 
back. This is the kind of stuff that I think people were looking for from those brands, and instead, you know, those brands try to do something sportier and smaller. I think doing something grand and luxurious like this is exactly what a lot of people want, and I think it makes a lot of sense for Genesis to go in this direction. Now, I still wish that, you know, there was a sport version. I hope that maybe they do a G80 Sport again like they used to, because um, I think that would be certainly welcome. But, um, you know, this thing is just still such a nice vehicle to live with, to just cruise around, do your errands, all that kind of stuff. And it's really nice just in, to live with. I mean, the only little minor annoyance was that the uh, radar sensors would go off every once in a while for no good reason, it seemed. And I was really confused as to why, you know, I'd be like sitting at a red light and they'd start going off even though there wasn't anything there, there wasn't any rain even dripping on them. It was a like, dry day and it would just randomly go off. That might just be this one's uh, little, you know, early production quirks or something, I'm not sure. Um, but really the other thing that kind of stood out to me in the week of driving here is just how many heads this thing turns. I mean, I don't think I've gotten this much attention driving a vehicle since the uh, new mid-engine Corvette that I was reviewing uh, this past summer. So, you know, it stands out. It really is distinctive and, uh, you know, people take notice. A lot of people maybe aren't sure what it is and so it's something that's new, but it's also just, you know, very impressive looking. And so not only do people turn and look, but they continue to look they continue to stare, uh, you know, probably to figure out what it is, but also just, you know, to kind of check it out because it is, I think, a really bold look. And and uh, maybe it's a little too bold for some people with the grill and stuff, but personally, I think that it looks really, really nice. But the other thing to mention here is the highway driving in the G80. So we will go ahead and turn on the highway drive assist uh, system. And I did actually test the system pretty extensively earlier in the week and uh, did a decent amount of highway driving actually. And so um, what I've noticed is that this iteration of the highway drive assist does do a little bit of a better job than the G90 that I took on a road trip a few months ago. That uh, gave me a little less confidence than this system does. Now this system is still not perfect and I would even say it's not one of the best systems out there. I still like Volvo's system better. I like Honda's system and Acura's system better. Um, even Nissan's system um, gives me a little bit more confidence than this one does. It's, every once in a while it still will, will lose track of the road lines and there's a couple of times where it'll still like veer towards the, the lane and will not hold the lane very well. Well, now this system did hold the lane better than previous highway drive assist vehicles I've tested but it still wasn't perfect and it still wasn't to a high enough standard where I could kind of quit worrying about it you know with a lot of the others I don't have to babysit them you know really strictly whereas with this one I still kind of be like oh, okay like right now it is literally driving on the shoulder and now it's coming back over but um, it just gets confused. It's now driving on the shoulder again, and I'm like, what are you doing? It's kind of strange. I wish I could relax with this system, but here we go again. I'm Highway Drive Assist doing its thing, and it wants to cut that lane, which is unacceptable when you're driving around traffic, like most people do 99% of the time. And so, I don't know. I mean, other people say they love this system. Maybe I just have the worst luck with this system. I don't know, but um, unfortunately, this new G80, with this new generation, you know, I think has the newest highway drive assist that they have right now, still is just subpar, unfortunately. And I'm sad to report that. I was excited. I was hoping maybe these newest Genesis models would have some improvements and maybe it is a tiny bit better, but I mean, the lane holding, it's still just not as good as, you know, all those better systems that I just mentioned. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Other things though, as far as highway driving goes, um, it is so quiet on the highway. I'm really impressed with it. And I even gave a ride to my friend who actually owns a uh, previous generation uh, G80. Uh, he actually had it back when it was a Hyundai Genesis, uh, the 2015 model uh, is what he has. And um, he rode in this, and we did a little brief highway drive and he was impressed too at just how quiet it is. Not only on the highway, but even whenever we were stopped, he was like, wow, the engine's still running. I can't even hear it. So, I mean, it's really a nice leap up. And if you are someone who's owned a previous Hyundai Genesis or G80, this will be a really nice improvement in those refinement uh, characteristics and stuff. It really is very nice in all those ways. And, uh, you know, but as long as you're okay with driving yourself, you know, you're not missing anything with that highway drive assist either. If you just don't use it, you know, you can just have the normal adaptive cruise control system. That all works flawlessly and, uh, you know, have no complaints there. The last two things I mentioned about the Genesis here are the fuel economy and the pricing of the G80. So first, fuel economy. So I've been driving this vehicle for 188 miles here, so a good amount of driving. And I did do a little more highway driving than I usually do. So um, that certainly did help the average. But anyway, I've been averaging 21.7 MPG. And so these are rated at 22 in the city, 25 combined, and 30 on the highway. So I'm basically getting that city number, which is uh, something I usually don't get 
in the winter time here. So again, the little bit more highway driving did certainly help, but um, you know, to basically be nailing that city number, I'm pretty happy with, because uh, you know, even with a little bit more highway driving, a lot of other vehicles still struggle to get that, especially in the winter time, and even just in my normal reviewing, uh, you know, even in the middle of the summer, sometimes I'm getting two under the city rating in a lot of other vehicles. So. I think this vehicle is, you know, could potentially even overperform its EPA ratings, but at the very least, I'd say it certainly lives up to those EPA ratings. And so if I was doing strictly highway, I have no doubts that I would get 30 MPG easily. You know, it is one of the benefits of having now a four cylinder here in the G80 is you're gonna get, you know, much better fuel economy, especially than that twin turbo V6 in the higher trims of the G80. So that is certainly a nice thing. And so I'm happy to report that fuel economy lives up to, you know, the expectations that it sets. So that's great. Um, and then the last thing to mention here is the pricing in the G80. So that is one area where Genesis, they do so, so good with their pricing and making things very competitive. So they start just under $48,000. Um, and then if you want one with all-wheel drive in this turbo four-cylinder, you'll be starting at $51,250. And then uh, this one as tested, this is an advanced trim. So this is a mid-level 2.5T. It's not the top prestige, um, which is kind of interesting for a press car. Usually they you know, send fully loaded models, but I'm kind of happy to test a mid-grade version here but um so this one as tested is just under fifty seven thousand dollars you know that still is a really good bargain whenever you consider you know the main german luxury competitors that everyone is you know shooting for e-class the bmw 5 series the audi a6 you know all those um this actually comes in you know a few thousand cheaper now it's not a huge difference in pricing you know i think those you can get pretty similarly equipped for you know low sixty thousands or something like that um but you know this still does have a lot of features that those can't match for example, this 14 and a half inch massive display, um, you know, a lot of them have, you know, pretty nice displays in them, but none of them are this big. And so that's, you know, a really nice uh, feature to have. And uh, I mean, I just love the colors in here. The interior is a lot more interesting. You have this little, you know, display here for the climate control, which um, aside from the Audi, none of the others even offer anything like that. This just feels, you know, well worth that price tag for the most part. Um, I would say the only other thing I can say is that uh, this is, you know, has a partially analog gauge cluster. And that is one thing that if you go for, you know, most of the competitors these days, you will have fully digital gauges in those. So that is only, you know, the one other little thing that maybe detracts a little bit, but otherwise, you know, this is just very competitive with those. And then to get it for, you know, much less money, you know, just helps to make that decision even easier to go for the Genesis here over some of those German competitors. The Genesis also is the only luxury brand here to give you a 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, which also gives you peace of mind if you are someone who buys a luxury vehicle and keeps it for a long time. Um, I know many of those people prefer Lexuses and things like that, um, but Lexus even can't match the warranty coverage. I mean, maybe the Lexus is going to be, you know, just as reliable or more reliable as this, but you know, Lexus doesn't put their money where their mouth is as far as their warranty goes like Genesis does here. So, um, you know, at least if you did have any kind of issues down the road, you know, you're covered for 10 years as far as the powertrain goes on these. And so that's a very nice touch um, for the Genesis. And another thing kind of tips it in the Genesis favor. Yes, it doesn't have the brand recognition of, you know, all the bigger competitors. And so as far as, you know, that goes, you know, maybe depreciation and stuff won't be, you know, quite as good as it would be on this German ones. But the German competition, they also depreciate pretty quickly. Um, they're kind of brutal with depreciation on some of those. So, you know, they don't really, none of the vehicles in this luxury segment really do great as far as that goes either, aside from maybe the Lexus, you know, that one's really one of the only ones that's going to hold its value super well. But really the Genesis story is just beginning still you know it's still a very young brand and so there's a good chance that you know their depreciation and stuff could really improve as well over time so that uh, you know this could maybe in the long run actually do a little bit better than the Germans potentially we'll have to wait and see on all how all that plays out here um, but yeah, overall, I just really do love the G80 here, and I think it's worth a hard look if you're shopping in this segment of vehicle. I think that it is you know, a little bit of an underdog, and you're gonna stand out more. Like I said, it turns heads, but you know, in especially if you you know live in an area where everyone drives an E-Class and a 5 Series, you know, it's just kind of more of the same and just a little bit boring, honestly. And so to have something that stands out, that's different, that's new and exciting, I think that really should go a long way with a lot of people. 
And like I said, it's certainly at least worth checking out, giving it a test drive, seeing what you think of it. Um, but overall, I'm really impressed with this four-cylinder turbo version. I'd love to try out the twin turbo V6 and see if that feels a little bit sportier. But as it is, this is a really nice luxury car. And um, yeah, I really like it. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the G80 in the comments below. Huge thanks to Genesis for providing me here with the G80 to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.